Tate Modern is the jewel in the crown of modern art galleries in London. It holds the nation's collection of modern arts from 1900 to the present day. The gallery has welcomed millions of visitors and it is in the top 10 most visited museums and galleries in the world. The collection holds masterpieces of international and British modern art. Tate Modern is located in London and it houses the United Kingdom's national collection of international, modern and contemporary art and forms part of the Tate Group together with Tate Britain, Tate Liverpool and Tate St Ives. It is located in the former Bankside Power Station in the Bankside area of the London Borough of Suffolk. Bankside Power Station is a decommissioned electricity generating station. It generated electricity from 1891 to 1981. It was used as a training base for electrical and mechanical student apprenticeships from all over the country. Since 2000, the building has been used to house the Tate Modern Art Museum and Gallery. Several episodes of British television, particularly science fiction series that have required industrial backdrops such as Red Dwarf, were filmed at the station. The building featured in Danny Cannon's film Judge Dredd. It served as the Tower of London in Richard Lacrane's 1995 film version of Richard III. Well a big hello ladies and gentlemen. Today Yana and I have come to the Tate Modern in London and we're going to take you for a little journey around this incredible art gallery. So here we go. Enjoy the show. Tate Modern is one of the largest museums of modern and contemporary art in the world. As with the UK's other national galleries and museums, there is no admission charge for access to the collection displays, which take up the majority of the gallery space. Tate was third in the list of most visited art museums in the world in 2020, and the most visited in Britain. The gallery is located close to Blackfriars train and tube station and opposite St Paul's Cathedral. During this video, Yana and I intend to take you all on a virtual walk of the Tate Modern Gallery Rooms. We're going to pick out several pieces of art and tell you a little about them. Some of these art pieces include art made from real blood and provoking pieces that showcase some of the worst of what humans are capable of. That's murder and genocide. There is even a surprising piece that captures a little male nudity. So stick around and enjoy the video. This particular painting is called Gothic Landscape. It was painted in 1961 by Lee Krasner. It's an oil paint on canvas and purchased by the Tate in 1981. Although this is an abstract painting, the thick vertical lines that dominate its centre can be seen as trees with thick knotted roots at their base. It was probably this that led Krasner to call the painting Gothic Landscape several years after completing it. Krasner was married to the artist Jackson Pollock. Gothic Landscape was made in the years following his death of a car crash in 1956. 
It belongs to a series of large canvases whose violent and expressive gestural brushstrokes can be seen as a reflection of her grief. This particular piece of artwork is titled Vessel. It was painted in 1961. It's oil on canvas. It was painted by artist Helen Frankenfehler. Vessel was produced by Frankenfehler's soak stain technique. The composition emphasizes symmetry, yet the painted form appears to pulse with implied movement and energy. It seems to play with the familiar idea of ink blots used in psychological testing. Parts of the canvas are deliberately left unpainted to help structure for composition. As Frankenfehler noted, the negative space has just as active a role as the positive painted space. The negative spaces maintain shapes of their own and are not empty. Interesting, isn't that? You think so? Yeah? See anything you like. Right, out of this room, Yana, what's your favourite piece of art? Is there anything that you're drawn to? Mm, I don't really want to say it on the camera. But you can say it. Look at this. It's quite interesting, Yana, isn't it? Um, I can rate this to 1 out of 10. Yeah. I give it an 8. An 8, yeah. It's quite colourful, isn't it? The following painting is by artist Richard Hamilton entitled The Citizen. It was made between 1981 and 1983. It is oil on two canvases and purchased by the Tate in 1985. The Citizen was based on steals from a 1980 news report about the IRA dirty protest at the Mays prison in Northern Ireland. Paramilitary inmates had initially been given a special category status. This was revoked and they were treated as ordinary criminals. In response, they decided to wear only prison blankets and to daub their cell walls with excrement. Hamilton wrote that he could not condone the methods of the IRA, but was struck by the resemblance to Christian martyrdom. He also felt a connection to the prisoners since they had produced wall paintings. One panel shows the prisoner and his cell, the other is more abstract. This particular piece of artwork really stood out for me. It is by artist Teresa Margolis, titled Flag One. The medium used to create this art includes fabric, blood, earth, and other substances. The fabric of Flag One contains traces of blood, soil, from sites of murders around the northern border of Mexico testifying to the thousands of violent deaths associated with the powerful drug cartels that control smuggling routes to the United States. Another version of his work was shown at the Venice Biennial in 2009, where Margolis represented Mexico with an exhibition titled What Else Could We Talk About? 
as the government failed to intervene in the drug wars. The blood-stained cloth was hung outside the Mexican pavilion as a memorial for the citizens that the nation ignored. Yeah, probably. And it's, got, it's got soil on it as well, so soil and blood. So I suppose it's kind of representation of some violence and stuff, isn't it? This beautiful and yet poignant art installation is by artist Juan Manchel Echevarria entitled Requiem 2006-2013 and consists of 65 photographs on inkjet paper and mounted on acrylic. Each of these prints captures two moments, months or years apart, for show graved in the cemetery of Puerto Berrio, a town on the banks of the Magdalena River in Colombia. For decades, the site has been the resting place for unidentified bodies found on the shores of the river. They were rescued by the villagers of Puerto Berrio and buried in the town cemetery. They are known as Enens, Nomen Nascio, or No Names. Echavario spent years visiting the site, gaining trust and permission from the community. Through his lens, he pres preserves and records this act of mourning, which he sees as a form of collective resistance. In some cases, families from Puerto Berrio have renamed the deceased with names of loved ones who also lost their lives in the country's more than 50 year long civil war. With a little look, John has, John has found something really cool that's going to show us all. <laughs> I'm not too sure if that will be allowed on. <laughs> it's art. So, yeah. If you're enjoying the video, then please don't forget to hit the like button as it helps others find the video. If you would like to see more videos like this one, then please subscribe to our channel. We go on treasure hunts, we search out historical sites, research history and genealogy, narrate and write our own stories, we vlog, cycle, walk. And most importantly, we welcome you guys to our channel. Visit our website for more information about Stephen and Yana. Feel free to check out our blogs, pages and posts. You can even support us further and join us on Patreon and become a Saxon, Viking or even a knightly Norman. Either way, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? Oh, we've got a great picture of St Paul's there, isn't it? Strange piece, isn't it, Yana? Do you this? Do you this? Strange, isn't it? Um, yeah. If I were afraid, I'd probably give it a two. Yeah, you would, yeah? Yeah. To be honest with you. What do you think of this one, Yana? Do you think it's. Yeah. A piece of artwork. It does look very strange, doesn't it? It's got pieces of metal in there as well, Yana. It's got the clay wrapped around the metal in there.
The next piece of art is by Marwan Richmoui, entitled Monument for the Living. It is made from concrete and wood. This sculpture is a scale model of the Burr El Mer building in Beirut, Lebanon. The tower was owned by members of the El Mer family, a prominent political clan. Construction began in 1974, but it was left unfinished after the outbreak of civil war. Originally an office block, it was only ever used as a sniper outpost. The tower is too tall to knock down and too dense and so continues to dominate the skyline. It is now seen as a memorial to the internal conflict that has never really been resolved. piece of artwork which is just behind us. This next piece of artwork is by Helen Johnson entitled Seat of Power. Helen uses literal and symbolic images to refer to the continued relationship between Australia and Britain. Johnson represents this as embodied in the fetishistic production of a replica of the Speaker's Chair at Westminster that was gifted to the Australian Parliament in 1926. At the centre, Johnson replicates an image of the British House of Commons from Manners and Customs of Ye English in 1849, a book of satirical sketches by Victorian illustrator Richard Doyle. These images acknowledge corruption and greed of colonial culture.
This piece of art left a very big impression on me, and it's one of my many favourites housed at the Tate Gallery. It's called Atlantic Civilization, and by artist André Vujon. Vujon was the leading artist associated with the French Communist Party in the early 1950s. Here, he characters the increasing Americanization of Europe that a major target of Communist Party propaganda. Vujon's style plays on the comic strips associated with American culture. A businessman greeting an American car embodies capitalism. The composition is full of elements that imply criticism of the French colonial wars in Indochina and North Africa, the continuing nuclear threat and the exploitation of the underprivileged. The electric chair on the pedestal refers to Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, American citizens convicted of spying for the USSR. This piece of art by Haig Young is a suspension of 500 Venetian blinds. Haig Young often makes work using everyday domestic items, transforming them in extraordinary ways. Here in this gallery, Yang's choice highlights the unique sculptural possibilities of these ordinary window coverings. They can be flat or three-dimensional, opaque or transparent, compressed or expanded. The use of the blinds means they play with light changes as we move around the sculpture. The choice of material also brings in ideas of privacy and visibility. Yeah? I know, but yeah, so it's got the legs of the chair. So it's been made from like reclaimed wood and stuff. creeps as well. So, what if the brick collapses and we go, ah! Oh, yeah, that wouldn't be too nice, would it? No. Should we look on the other side? The battery's gonna go on. Let me look first. Holy smokes! I don't think I had the other end there. Oh, wow. 